come on over, have some fun with Crazy Taxi. Yeah, 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 yeah. Howdy my totally as always tubular gamers and we're back for another Sega ranking video and today's is going to be on if you didn't hear already Crazy Taxi. Now Crazy Taxi is one of Sega's most classic and probably beloved series of them all and you know all the games got a pretty simple premise you're a taxi driver so you pick people up and take them where they want to go. It's that simple but a lot of crazy things happen along the way and you got to do it fast enough. You get to compete with ongoing traffic, you gotta get to places really fast, you got a timer you're going up against, you gotta try to make as much money, you can do crazy jumps and boosts and drifts all over the place. Yeah, it gets pretty crazy, that's why it's called Crazy Taxi. The series originally started as an arcade game where it immediately just had a ton of popularity. People loved the gameplay, they loved The Offspring, which is the band that does all the music for the game. It's Offspring and Bad Religion, they're Crazy Taxi staples. And the game had really crazy addicting gameplay. People really wanted to keep going. It was that mentality of just one more time, one more time, I'll be getting better and better, get more money, get further, all that. And yeah, it really took off. Sega really had a hit on their hands in the arcades with Crazy Taxi. Naturally, they brought it to the Dreamcast where it had similar success. And as few arcades as there are, I still go to them and I see Crazy Taxi there. I mean, it's been in arcades for 20 plus years. It's a staple of the arcade at this point. But after that initial arcade game, Sega would actually make a couple more Crazy Taxi games. These were obviously nowhere near as popular, and some people don't even know that there was another Crazy Taxi after that initial arcade game, but I do, and I've played all of them. So here we are. We're going to rank all of the Crazy Taxi games. We're going to be ranking these games based on how much fun I had with them, the content, the music, the controls, all that sort of stuff. But you'll quickly find out that all of these games play very similar with their score attack gameplay. And so I can say if you like one Crazy Taxi, you'll probably like all the Crazy Taxis. Also with Crazy Taxi being such a beloved game, it's been ported to a ton of different consoles. We're not going to be including all of the ports here, we're going to just be narrowing it down. Also, no mobile titles, that's just a no from me, Chief. It also seems that this video might be outdated in the future as rumors of a new Crazy Taxi have been circling here in 2022, so we'll see if this list becomes outdated. And as always, let me know down below your favorite Crazy Taxi, like, share, sub, all that good stuff. Let's get to it. What do I think is the worst of the Crazy Taxis? I think just about everybody can agree that Crazy Taxi Catch a Ride for the Game Boy Advance is the worst in the Crazy Taxi series. While I said I wasn't going to look at ports, this is an attempted port. See, it's not actually a port because, yeah, it's just not very good. Attempted ports? Hey, that's fair game for this list. Actual ports? No. But yeah, this is the only Crazy Taxi game that I can truly definitively say is like actually bad. So yeah, it attempts to recreate the main game, but it just completely fails thanks to the frame rate, how choppy it is, how slow the game runs, the terrible controls, the lackluster 3D graphics. It's one of the only GBA games to truly have like 3D like this, and it's why there's only a few, because it's awful. The GBA really should have tried to create its own unique crazy taxi experience rather than trying to recreate the arcade game because it just does not work at all on the GBA. The GBA was just not capable of recreating it. This is a Dreamcast game basically put onto the GBA and it shows because it, it just doesn't work very well. It does have the two cities from the main game, it has the four characters, and it even has the nine mini games from the console version. But really, the less said about this game version, whatever, the better, because it's just not worth looking at in the slightest. Bad. Alright, so here we have Crazy Taxi Fair Wars, released for the PSP in 2007. This game attempts to combine Crazy Taxi 1 and 2 into one game. In addition, they even added a multiplayer mode. I never tried the multiplayer, and the PSP doesn't exactly go online these days, so I doubt I ever will try the multiplayer. So by combining Crazy Taxi 1 and 2, are they able to make some super Crazy Taxi game? Well, not really. This is probably one of the more inferior ways you could play Crazy Taxi 1 and 2, is because it's on the PSP, there are a number of compromises. The core gameplay is there though, it is that score based addicting arcade experience where you just want to try to get as many points as possible and take as many customers to their destination as possible. That is absolutely there. But when comparing all of the crazy taxi games to each other, yeah, you could do a lot better. This is probably one of the most inferior ways to play either of these games. I mean, it's not the GBA version, but this isn't the ideal version. The game has all the maps, all the characters, and all the minigames from the first two games and their console versions, so at least they've got all the content here. 
but when it comes to the presentation, this game is seriously lacking. The game runs considerably slower than the original versions, probably due to the PSP. The graphics are very similar to the Dreamcast game, but there is considerably more pop-up, like stuff literally just pops up all over the place. Everything looks really jagged. And the general frame rate and stability of the game is just not as nice as you would want or even as close to the Dreamcast. The controls are also pretty lacking and feel even more unresponsive than regular Crazy Taxi. I get that the taxi's crazy, but I can barely even control this thing sometimes it feels like. And pulling off the crazy moves? Like, yeah, no, it just does not feel as good. But then they perform the cardinal sin of Crazy Taxi, the absolutely, you do not do this, how could they? They remove the license music. It's one thing to remove all the licensing in game like Pizza Hut. Okay, you do that, that's not the end of the world, but removing the music? Really? No offspring, no bad religion, you know what, no. I'm just not even gonna bother with this version anymore, like this is the inferior way to play these games. It makes for an interesting little footnote in the Crazy Taxi series, but I really just do not recommend this game. And so here we have Crazy Taxi 2 for the Dreamcast. I mean, aside from that shoddy PSP port, this really is the only way to play Crazy Taxi 2. And I actually think Crazy Taxi 2 is a bit underrated. It's not talked about anywhere near as much as the original, and it's pretty good. Is it as good as the original? No, but it still is fun. The gameplay really is just the first game's gameplay with some minor additions. You're still driving around trying to take people to their destination as fast as possible, and it feels great. The controls are very good on the Dreamcast controller, and everything feels really tight. Crazy Taxi 2 introduces some new characters to the mix. They aren't as iconic, you know, as the original characters, but they're still pretty alright. Instead of being about LA or maybe San Francisco, this game instead is about New York. These two maps are Around Apple and Small Apple. Pretty obvious it's based off New York City, and I think these maps are alright. They're nowhere near as iconic or expertly designed as the first games, but I still think they're okay. The game has a new move for you to perform. It's the Crazy Hop, where it actually allows the taxi to legit just jump. This adds a lot of different mechanics to the maps as you'll be jumping all over the place, and the passengers love it. Speaking of passengers, you can actually pick up multiple passengers now at once and drop them all off all over the place. It definitely is a bit crazier. The game also has some mini games here, and I think these mini games are fine enough. They're pretty standard and feel very similar to the first game's mini games, but they're there. When it comes to the music, it does have the offspring in it, so it's all good there. It's all good there. The music is good. But yeah, it's really safe to say if you like Crazy Taxi, you're going to really like Crazy Taxi 2. It was actually one of the reasons I bought my Dreamcast. I really just wanted to play Crazy Taxi 2, and now that I have, I can say... It's pretty good. I wouldn't say it's as good as the first game. I don't like the map as much, and picking up multiple passengers, eh, I don't know if that did it for me. Maybe I've just gotten older or played too much of the first game, but it just didn't hook me like the first game really hooked me in. But I can say if you still got your Dreamcast, I mean, you should go check it out. This game really needs to be re-released, because I think more people would appreciate it if they re-released it on something other than Fair Wars. Still, it is a pretty decent time to it, and it does give that crazy taxi experience that you are looking for. And so here in the number two spot, we actually have the original Crazy Taxi. I know, shocking, it's not number one, but we have the original classic Crazy Taxi that was released in 1999. And you know what? All these years later, this game is still an absolute blast. It really does have that arcade experience that just is not around these days. I mean, the gameplay was so fresh and, like, different from everything else. You were just a taxi driver. You are trying to take people all over the place as fast as you could. It was just a really neat idea. In fact, it was so neat that Fox and Interactive tried to recreate it with The Simpsons and got in trouble. Always gotta mention Simpsons Road Rage. But aside from that, the gameplay really gave an addicting feel to it. You really did want to see how far you could make it, how many people you could take to their destination, and just trying to do it as fast as possible while just, you know, pumping quarters or whatever the coin is that it takes into it. Thankfully, we have many, many home releases of Crazy Taxi, and you can do that from your home and you only gotta pay one fee, unless you download it and put it on like an emulator, then it's no fee. But regardless of the location, scenario, or context, you're gonna have a good time with Crazy Taxi. I mean, it's pretty hard to dislike Crazy Taxi. You got four cool characters to choose from. You drive around the LA San Francisco area just dropping people off and trying to do it as fast as you can. Getting to the location faster and getting a bunch of crazy stunts in will get you more and more money. You even get tips from these people from driving near cars or being in the air. These people are just as crazy as the game. And due to each session of the game not taking that long, this game obviously has a ton of replay ability as you'll want to just go back over and over and over to try to master these maps, the drift, the boost, 
all of that. And I mean, I've played a ton of this game. I have a ton of great memories with this game over the last, I don't know, decade, decade and a half playing this game in either the arcade or on the GameCube or even one of the other re-releases. You can't really go wrong with Crazy Taxi unless it's the GBA version or Fair Wars. This game also did have mini games in the console releases known as Crazy Box. These were fine enough. They were fun little distractions, but you'll be done with these in like 30 minutes and 45 minutes at most. But Crazy Taxi 1 is a true classic for a reason, because it really just is always going to be a good time. But in the number one spot we have the very forgotten Crazy Taxi 3 High Roller for the Xbox released in 2002. Now I know what you're thinking, how could this game be better than the original? There's no way the map's better than the original. And you know, you'd be right, Crazy Taxi 3 has a new map, it's in Las Vegas, and this map is nowhere near as good as the original. I would say that the map is okay at best, but it's not even all that great. It's a little too flat for my liking, but it's fine enough. But the thing is about Crazy Taxi 3, it includes the original in it. Yeah, it actually just straight includes West Coast from the original Crazy Taxi with a graphical upgrade, and it has that same core gameplay of Crazy Taxi in it. In fact, it doesn't just have that. It has Small Apple from Crazy Taxi 2, now at night. It really does combine all three games into one package and you really do get the best from all of them. You get easily the tightest controls like in the whole series. Like this game probably is the best controls that the series has ever seen. You have probably the best graphics that the game series has ever seen and you've got three maps to it. One of which being the original, the iconic, the classic, the best map. Not to dunk on the other two maps, is they're pretty alright, they're just not as good as that original one, but hey, they're alright, you can pick up multiple passengers again, crazy drift, boost, and jump is here, you can pick up a party of passengers now. And yeah, I kinda wonder why this game is so forgotten, why so many people don't remember Crazy Taxi 3, it didn't even review all that well back when it came out, but looking at all the games, for me I was like, oh well Crazy Taxi 3 is the best kinda almost by default, it's got Crazy Taxi 1, 2, and some new stuff in it. It does have some new mini games as well. These are known as Crazy X, and there's three levels, each pretty different from each other. This, I mean, the mini games were never all that much to me in the other Crazy Taxi games, so this is just kind of another neat thing to it. The music is actually really good. It's like the best soundtrack of them all. It has Bad Religion, it's got The Offspring, it's got The Essentials, but then it even has a bunch of other music in it as well. It's like, no, this is the biggest, best Crazy Taxi game of them all. It is the most content, and it is the most to it. If you're going to play any of these crazy taxi games, you're probably going to end up playing the original since that's the most widely available, and that's a shame because Crazy Taxi 3, like 2, needs to really be re-released. It's only on the Xbox, the original Xbox. There is a PC version of that as well, but I don't really know anything about that. But Crazy Taxi 3, it's nothing to scoff at. It's probably the best game of them all, and you know... Like I said at the beginning of this video, if you like Crazy Taxi, you can't really go wrong with any of these games. They all play very similarly, and they're all a ton of fun. I hope we do get another Crazy Taxi in the future. I don't know how it's going to work now that taxis are pretty much gone. I guess it'll be Crazy Uber or whatever, but it'll be a fun time. So with that in mind, I hope everyone has a great day, great night, whatever it is near you. See you later. Bye-bye. Subscribe.